And now we're live. This is the September meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. We're starting at 1132. And uh, I guess roll call. Well, I know Elise is here. I know Marty is here. I know Saren is here. I know Tori is here and I'm here. And that's all we've got. So I don't know, we need a roll call. No, I think you're fine. Yeah. We do <clears> excuse one, me. Don't we? Uh, we only have five members no, at the okay. moment. So we have a quorum. And I guess that's something I wanted to bring up as an something I don't know what to do because I've written to the town manager a couple times in the last 13 months when we lost member number seven and we have no member number seven yet even though when uh xander came on there was another person or was it marty i don't even know there was person. another person but he didn't yeah. stay too long i think he no was no no there year. was another applicant and no, that I applicant did not get called back even though the applicant was pretty strong i thought and so i don't know what happened but the town manager hasn't acted on it and now we're down two so what can so, we do about it so can i uh, just insert something yeah um, i was talking with uh the ex previous executive director at stavros he asked me a question and about ADA uh, regulations regarding the town fares that are set in the common, like which passengers could be denied access? Is there anything in writing? Well, I said, not, not, nothing that I know of. But I said, you know, you uh, were thinking of applying to ADA, I mean, to DAC. And he said, yeah, but I put it off. And then he said, I cannot find the link. So I kept the link that Maureen sent him a while ago. So I sent it. And yesterday uh, I was at the um, Amherst neighbors picnic and the town manager was there. And I brought it up to his attention. Did Jim Cudnier ever apply? He said, yes, he did. And he said he also gave me as reference. And I said, he'll be very good at it. And I said, not only he's very knowledgeable with all the ADA issues, his uh, late wife was also a woman with a disability. So he's very on top of things. So that's where we left it. Yeah, that's interesting. He wasn't even the applicant I was talking about. So. Mm -hmm. It, about a year ago, then we, we've had, there is there are interested people, but there is no activity. And especially since he applied, what is the town manager waiting for? I don't know. I, and each time I write, I don't get an answer. So um, I don't know, Maureen, can you try to find out what's going on? Sure. Haley just joined. Hi, Haley. Yeah. Hey, nice Hi, to see Haley. you again. Hey. Hi, Haley. Well, Haley. Um, well um, I uh, just can to finish move off. You. Yeah, I can. Um, I can certainly send an email to the town manager, uh, reminding them that that now there's two openings on the DAAC and asking if they're um, going are working on filling those seats. And I'll see if I get an update and all that. Okay, he might answer you. That'll be good. Yeah. And so, although this wasn't on the agenda, um, right. um, Myra yesterday sent me an email asking, uh, mentioning she had some questions about accessibility and the senior center and mm -hmm. the bank center. So I said, oh, well, let me see if um, Haley Bolton, um, our, the town senior services department could uh, attend, because I think she can answer some of um, some of Myra's questions. Um, so hi, so, Haley. Yeah, hey. Haley, you want to oh, introduce yourself? Here. Yeah, uh, great introduction. I'm Haley, the director of the Amherst Senior Services Department. Um, 
Yeah, I'm happy to answer your questions, Myra. Cool. Thank you so much for asking them. All right. My, first of all, I got these great emails. One, you know, I, I get one, mm -hmm. like I get a whole host of them about this and that and the other program. Mm -hmm. And all the programs are live at the senior center. So I didn't see a link on any of them. So it appears that they're not hybrid. Um, and I wanted to know if you have any plans to make them hybrid because it's not that easy for people to get to the senior center all the time. So I guess that was one question. And the other question was, um, when I got my van tickets last time, you told me that the town had arranged to get a used van from the PVTA, mm -hmm. and Paul Burns told me that you that it's been released to you. You should have it. Um, and I wondered if you had any plans for how the van was going to be used. Sure. So I can start by answering your first question. And yes, we are trying to do more on-site programs. I think that you'll find a lot of senior centers are now pivoting to that direction. I have been in touch with, um, you know, Northampton and Hadley. We are trying to do a little bit more on-site to get people back at the Bang Center. Um, however, we do still have uh, cosmology virtual um, healthy bones and balance is virtual. We have another exercise class that meets virtually. Um, looking to do a couple more Zoom programs, but certainly the priority is to get people at the center. Um, and how are they going to get there? So you can take the van. Uh, we have a few people who walk over. Um, a friend could take you. Uh, I think there are a number of different options. You, know, you can take the PVTA van, you can take the paratransit van. Um, Amherst Neighbors provides rides. So there are options in the community and you are right. Um, at some point in the very near future, we're gonna be driving down to Springfield to bring the van uh, up to Amherst. And once we have that, uh, working with our new volunteer and outreach coordinator, uh, we're gonna be identifying, you know, how do we wanna recruit volunteers to drive or you know, how do we wanna implement this new program? Um, the great thing about this van is that unlike some of the other options, you know, say a friend taking you, we have the capacity to take people who have a walker or a wheelchair um, on the lift. Uh, Haley, could you, um, just for, for folks that are not familiar about the van, um, it's I think it's being donated by from yes. UMass. Yeah, nope. can you uh, explain? From PVTA. Oh, so oh, PVTA. A, yeah, thank you. It's a retired van. So once the vans hit 100,000 miles, they retire them, but they're still perfectly drivable. Uh, particularly if you're driving it within like a small sphere, we can easily get, you know, another mm -hmm. I think 75,000 at least out of it, uh, if not more. So they're all in good condition. Uh, the one that we picked out doesn't have any major problems. It's you know working in good order. Um, and again, it has that wheelchair lift, which is really important. So it can seat eight people. Um, and then of those eight seats, two of them are wheelchair seats. So we can take um, up to two wheelchairs. So you're looking for volunteers to drive the van? We're exploring a number of different options. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to pinpoint one thing right now, which I know is not always a great answer, um, but to be sustainable and hopefully have this program for a good long while, we wanna look at, you know, do we wanna use volunteers? Do we wanna potentially try to hire for a position? If we do that, what's the funding? Um, so there's a lot of layers and then drivers are one issue, right? But somebody has to take the rides. You have to have someone setting the appointments. Um, you know, there has to be a vetting process for drivers. So there, there's a lot of layers to do a transportation program. It's unfortunately not as easy as just going, picking someone up and taking them to where they wanna go. So we really wanna do it smart um, and again, very happy to have Julia McFadson, our new volunteer and outreach coordinator. She's going to be pivotal on how we recruit people to participate and to hopefully uh, drive. Okay, so I guess what I heard, yeah, you can take the PVTA van, but those of us who do take it know that it doesn't come when you want it. It might get you there an hour early and it might pick you up an hour late. Um, yes. So for a one hour program, that doesn't seem worth it to me. I don't know, does anybody mm -hmm. else have this concern? Tori, you don't have transportation. So would you, yeah. I mean, how do you feel about, I mean, you're working, I suppose you can't go to any of these programs anyway, because they're all in the daytime. Right. But, um, uh, but yes, that's the frustration with the PVTA van is that, um, 
typically they wouldn't drop you off 15 minutes before a program. They drop you off half hour to an hour early and then anywhere from a half hour to an hour after. So mm -hmm. yeah, if the program's an hour, it would it, that's a lot of waiting time. Yeah. Um, right. Um, and that is frustrating. I, I absolutely agree with that. I've been in positions in my life where I didn't have a vehicle and was totally reliant on public transit, you know, and oftentimes having to take a bus to get to the subway to get to where I want to go. Um, you know, I can say that we do have a lounge, we have coffee, we try to have lots of snacks. Um, we have a fully staffed senior center for the first time in a long time. Um, so there's people you can hang out and connect with. You know, we, we all love to chit chat. We love to come out and see who's hanging out. Um, we have games, we have puzzles, there are computers you can access. So even if you have to wait for say, 30, 45 an hour, um, there are some things that you can do. And you might even find a new friend. You know, in a perfect world, you might meet someone that you get along with very well and might not have met otherwise. And so I have a question. It's, I, I am working and I wouldn't be able to do daytime programs, but what is the, like, what is the age? Uh, how old do you have to be to partake in the senior center activities? Well, I'd say our main focus is 60 and older. You know, we definitely want to make sure that our, you know, older adults, 60 and older, have a place that they can go and feel comfortable. Um, but, you know, if you're 57 years old, we're not going to kick you out. You know, very rarely would we ask you to leave. Um, so, yeah, I would say we, we can be a little open ended. And we hope that if you are in your early 50s, that you will stay with us for a very long time um, and be a regular attendee. Um. And are you planning on, I don't know, do you take trips? Do you, I, um... We do. Uh, we have actually, the, or the friends, I should say, the friends of the Amherst Senior Center, they have sponsored a bus tour um, to Lake George happening October 18th. So we're going to drive the bus up uh, to Lake George. There's a little lunch and cruise. Folks will have an opportunity to do some shopping. Um, it's just kind of a, a kickstart onto what will be more trips in the future. You know, we're looking at going to the MFA one day um, to see the art. What's, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly and and so is your plan, so the bus you're taking, is that an accessible bus? Or is your plan to take the van if you have people signing up who have disabilities? Who the van that we have is very small. Um, so I'm not gonna say that we won't do vans, uh, trips with this ADA van, the special PVTA van. Um, there's nothing in the immediate future, but again, you know, we're looking at how do we even get drives or riders um, for in the immediate area, let alone a trip. Um, if the trip is something you're interested in to Lake George, I can ask the Buns company. Um, I've this is my first time using them, so I don't know, um, you know, exactly what the bus looks like. But if you'd like, I can ask and get that and let Maureen know that she could relay that message to you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sure. Not just I me. I assume it's a coach. Right? Yeah, it's a coach, but yeah, they are not, not sure what they look like. No, not, not any of them. Okay. No. Well, I don't know. I mean, you could check I mean, into have it. Have you see. ever seen one that's that's accessible? Uh, I have, city bus, yes. I have mm -hmm. ridden in one too. That was a coach, and that it was, was a coach. trip to New York. Oh, okay. And, and how did you get in? Center organized many years ago when Nancy Pagano was still the director mm -hmm. years ago. How did you get into like... the bus? Uh huh. How did you get in? You always have to go up a bunch of steps. I think they they had a lift. Oh. Okay, yeah, I mean, okay. I'll look. This is our first time using the company and, you know, again, it, just to kick things off. Um, so I'll certainly check in and and if it's not, we'll look at do, how can we make that right and do some trips with the van that is. Right. Mm -hmm. That would be my concern mm -hmm. is making trips as accessible as possible. Sure. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Why would the town not rent a bus that's fully accessible? Well, this isn't the town doing it. Um, so the, the town- Who's doing it? The Friends of the Amher Senior Center, okay. which is a separate and it's a 501c3. Public... It's a nonprofit organization. So it's its own organization. It's 
affiliated only with the senior center by virtue of the fact that they raise money for our programs and services, but it is not a town entity. Because the town can't fundraise. Raise. Yeah, correct. It, it's illegal for the town to uh, fundraise. And so Marty the, has a very good question. Mm -hmm. And I, I share the concern. I think, I think the ADA requires that all programs, in fact, I know that's true, all programs that are offered through the town. That is true public, for the town, but this no, is but not even, a town entity. I think entity. Even, even private entities have to do that. If it's open to everyone, then it must be accessible. But the, this it's not a free trip. It either. doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. That's the issue. It doesn't matter. I, mean, I could certainly, like I said, I mean, I'm happy to look into that. Um, but again, would, it's not a town. I mean, I guess it my doesn't matter. From the I don't town. think it matters. Um, All right. Well, we can. Yes, Haley and I can um, falls certainly under, look into that. Oh, I think it falls under. Actually, I don't. Yeah, that's oh, local. I'm not sure. I think you ought to look into it. I will. Yeah, because I mean, my understanding is that if it's a private organization, they can definitely do. They have a little bit more leeway than if they, if the, if the town of Amherst was doing this event. Yes, we would certainly make those provisions. So, are you advertising this through the senior center? That in the senior spirit, it's sponsored by the friends of the Amherst Senior Center. So the language is pretty clear that it's not put on by the town; it's by the friends group, which is yeah. our separate nonprofit. Yeah. I, I will say so. Um, which is akin to what many other senior centers do. I think if you yeah. look at Hadley, uh, their friends groups sponsor trips um, a lot more than we do actually in Amherst. This is our first four way back uh, yeah. into doing so. I, I think this is a really uh, interesting topic, um, an important topic to explore. Um, so Haley will look into it. Um, and you know, if, if it is something that needs to, um, change or, or or if there's something that you know the the friends of the senior center um should be doing and they're not doing then i'm sure uh, obviously they, they would be happy to oblige um and but it's i think a good educational component just so everyone's aware of what are the law the rules on it and you know if uh, for instance if they receive a request for a reasonable accommodation um regarding this like how can that be provided um um and uh so yeah let's uh Haley and I will regroup after this meeting and touch base about this and then at the I can send an email out to everyone to let everyone know uh, exactly what the regulations are because I, I think at this point n none of us truly know so um we don't want to sort of um acute uh, you know make sort of accusations or or just come mm -hmm. to conclusions at this exact moment well but yeah, it might no, that's be a good we're plan. taking with a bus company too to see mm -hmm. what they yeah. have to Definitely. accommodate because I have witnessed I have been in one of those but before uh, we jump to the agenda there was something new new thing that happened and Haley was present also and Elise was a, I attended a Amherst neighbors picnic yesterday at Mill River Yes, and it was held at the pavilion. And when I I had a little uh, duty there to uh, get the names of people and name tags and whatnot. So um, and maybe about two hours later, and at that time, town manager was also present. Present, a woman fell off the pavilion. Oh boy! Yeah. And then I uh, talk with uh, the town manager and I say, whoa, this is terrible. And this is really a violation of the a ADA because uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the pavilion or not. I wasn't because I, well, I hadn't been there for ages. So uh, when you park at the, uh, at the parking lot, you go up a little uh, pathway to take you to the pavilion. And the pavilion is maybe like about, oh, six, seven inches higher than the ground level. And I said, how in the world am I going to roll myself 
into the pavilion. And then I saw one entrance into the pavilion, which was kind of leveled, right. but not really very no. nicely leveled either. But the whole platform was about six, seven inches higher than the ground level. So this, uh, and, uh, this woman didn't see where she was standing, she fell backwards and she fell. Oh my God. She, well, luckily, I mean, at that time, we didn't think she suffered any injury or not. But I said, we have to look into this. And I said, we have to bring this up to our DAC meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul, Paul uh, said that, has it been in the transition plans? I said, I have no knowledge of that. No, they but didn't even. That, they didn't look at anything that wasn't downtown. Well, no. I mean, this no, is no, they, they did. The Mill Valley, uh, Mill River, River. Uh, Recreation Area. Yes. Um, they did, and so it was the pavilion that's outside. You mm -hmm. said, yes. Sarah. Right. Yes. Um, I I am writing this down, so I will certainly. Yes um look into this uh whether um anything was noted about the pavilion yeah um I, I didn't know about that event so thank you so much for telling us yeah. uh, about there were, that there were quite a few of uh town uh, employees that were present we they had lots of presents from crest which was very impressive and lots of presents from haley's group mm -hmm. uh, with the new uh, staff that were working how there. did you find Some out about it sarah Huh? How did you find out about it? Well, I'm a member of this Amherst Neighbors. Okay. Yeah, it was a they, member appreciation picnic. Right. So okay. they were they were thanking their volunteers and all their members, yeah. and um, yeah. it was quite sad. So you just go online to them, and you go to Amherst Neighbors, and you do what? You get an email if you're a member. Yeah. Well, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, but, I'll give yeah, you. Yeah. I, I guess I need to know more about Amherst Neighbors. Yeah, it's um, very nice, very nice group. Yeah. Yeah, and, I don't. And, um, so uh, Paul saw exactly what happened. You know, he really witnessed the whole thing. And so was Haley. And I couldn't get near because, of course, it is so inaccessible. Yeah. So, and then uh, in this day and age, in Amherst, you wouldn't think this would happen, but I knew it never caught my attention because this really happened right there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think we should give high priority. And then uh, on the agenda, um, Maureen, I saw number two is, uh, what is that? A FY23 Municipal ADA Improvement Grant application. Maybe this project could be part of that. It could. Yeah, that's a really good suggestion, uh, Saren. Um, um, and I'm thinking not only the entrances to the pavilion, but there's also a playground on the other side. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you can step off into wood chips. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that drop off is even greater than a few inches. Um, so I don't know, like, so if you were low vision, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could, you might be able to fall right off. I haven't been, a, I haven't been there in a while. They may have positioned the picnic tables in such a way that you would not yeah. fall off, but I don't know. But the potential is there. Um, yeah, yeah. So we should look look at that as well. And not the other. Yeah. Is, but the playground area that you can access off of the pavilion. I'm not saying to block off the, I, I would want the kids to be able to get on to the playground from the pavilion, but if they put a railing up with maybe a gateway, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so that, um, yeah, I, I, I will certainly look, look at the, the transition the transition plan for the mill river cons right, uh, recreation right. area uh, regarding the pavilion and then and the playground um i do i 
do believe that the town is um, uh, wants to replace the playground there. Um, if memory serves me, I think I was in a meeting at some point this year about uh, about um, making improvements there. So the town is is aware of um, improvements are needed. Um, and so I, I will, and then I'll certainly look at the transition plan in general for for that facility. And also, I don't think there is any restrooms nearby. The no. I know the restrooms are on the close to the entrance to the park where the, uh, the pool swim, swimming the pool locker room. You know, so if they're doing something, they might just as well look into placing restrooms in, near the pavilion. Well, that's a huge expense. Doing something yeah. to the pavilion is much more doable. But when you're talking about building a restroom, it's huge. And a porta potty, just something, because I didn't see anything. No, because people were asking me, and I said, all I know is there is restrooms on the other side of the pool. So, I mean, some, yeah. many of the people that asked me were ambulatory people, so it's no big deal. But if the pool wasn't open, the bathrooms may not necessarily have been open either. Know. Yeah. And, and then there the should be signage if to, there is no restrooms. Yes. You know, there should be signage to where the restrooms would be. There's because no pavilions are picnics. You know, people uh, socialize there for several hours. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, this is good. We'll get to see what's in the transition plan for because we didn't yeah. look at that at all. Yeah. Um, I hope so, that they notated all this. Oh yeah, they did a very thorough job uh, for each of the facilities. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, another, um, um, so uh, since we have Haley here, uh, do we have any other um, questions for her? I, I know she probably has um, a, a, a zillion other th you know matters that she needs to be handling. So I don't wanna take up um, I do have a question about the van too. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you sell them in $3 increments mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if there's any way that you can get 50 cents. No, they're 250. Yeah, if you're an Amherst resident, they're 250. The cards are right. 350 for out of towners. The book is $50. Right, right. I, re I realize that, but I'm, but, a lot of my trips because I go between counties are 350. And oh, I'm wondering if you could get 50 cent booklets from PBTA. Um, I can look into that. We've we've only had the the three dollar or the two fifty books um, since I started, ones. but okay. they used to have fifty cent ones. Yeah. So that's what I'm still wondering. Do. That one. I mean, uh, I know PVTA has them. I'm just wondering if you can get them because that would be have, real. We haven't really. had them since I started, um, but I can certainly ask the PVTA if we can get some more okay. different types of booklets. That would be great. I would truly appreciate that. Sure. All right. And then I took note of that, Tori and Haley. So Haley, if you could just let me know and then... Um, and then I can coordinate, I can put you both in touch if, if that is something that's feasible. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to look into that. And, you know, again, I'll check in with the, the coach company that we're using. Um, yeah. I'm glad to answer any questions folks have. And I'm glad to see that, you know, you're talking a little bit more about Mill River because um, I do think that could use a little fixing up yeah. for sure. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great that it came up. Yeah. And I'm, um, I guess in the age and different and dementia friendly Amherst and what's happening with a lot of places I know you're saying that a lot of the senior centers mm -hmm. are having people come back mm -hmm. and that for 95% of the people, that means they get in their own car and they go. And that doesn't work for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so um, I guess, you know, I guess you're saying, well, if you have a friend that happens to be available to drive you there, you can get there. That's not really a good solution mm -hmm. for the town to suggest. And uh, Amherst Neighbors is a good idea if, in fact, they do that. Mm -hmm. So that is something to pursue. Definitely. But, 
Um, we do provide rides. There's a ride volunteer thing at Amherst Neighbors. I mean, that's how I got to Mill River yesterday. Yep, Amherst Neighbors is good. And I'm not saying that you have to use those, but until yeah. we have our van that's, you know, out on the <clears throat> roads and taking people to rides, you know, I'm just spitballing a few, a few different ideas you can use. You know, again, we have paratransit tickets available at the Senior Center. Um, there is right. the fixed route bus in town. Uh, Amherst Neighbors is a, is a wonderful organization and they've been so helpful doing these rides for us. Um, right. So yeah, you know, there okay. are a few different options, but I, I, I agree, it can be frustrating when you wanna go someplace and you wanna go there quickly and there, there isn't always an easy option to do that. Um, so hopefully once we get our van up and running, that'll help take some of the pressure off. You know, We can't do everything, but certainly we can alleviate some of that stress. One good thing that came out of the pandemic and it is a good thing, is Zoom. Because three years ago, we would have all had to be in a certain place and we would have all had to give up half of our day to get there. Mm -hmm. um, and Zoom is great for people uh, you know, who don't have easy access to transportation. Mm -hmm. So I just think that it, I think that it doesn't have to be an either or. Either you come to the senior center or you miss the presentation because it doesn't have to be that way. There are places doing hybrid things all over. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that you can come up with some way to do that so that you don't exclude people who don't have easy access to transportation. That's yes. great to keep in mind and um, certainly something I can check in with our IT department and, and maybe consult with Maureen on um, some ways that we can hybridize certain programs. Yeah, absolutely. That'd and be, then, That'd be great. Some of the programs you have are fabulous. Thank you. No, they really are. I can't yeah. see getting to them. So I'll mm -hmm. check out Amherst Neighbors and see if there's any, I mean, you just get rides. What do you have to give back to Amherst? So you, you have to be a member um, and they do ask for about a week's notice so that they can coordinate the ride on their end. So, you know, again, if you if you're got yeah. your appointment tomorrow, you, you would have had to call the week before. Um, okay. But you just have to be a member and they, you know, they would like that you do more than just request rides. I know that they they love having people go to their their virtual programs, too. Oh, well, they have programs. Okay. Yeah. I can give you the name, Marty, okay. of the woman who is. One That's of the good to know. Heads. You can do yeah. that. You can just email it to me. I'll do that for you. But yeah. I think that it's great that we have them. Um, it's great that we have them. And I'm very excited about the van, however yes. you work it out. Volunteers have to, I mean, you have to have a special license to have, drive that kind of van. Not this one. And you have to, you have this to have one a you, you can just use your class D license. You can. So you can. Yeah. And the wheelchair lift is just a simple push button up and down. So there, there's no special training that has to go into it. We will, of course, want to do our own, you know, vetting and, you know, everyone has to be quarry checked and we'll do it. We also have to know how to check. secure the wheelchairs. Yeah, that's right. That's very the wheelchairs. Uh, that's not the easiest yeah. thing. I've seen people mess it up. That's right. Mm -hmm. Even that's after true. they have been trained. And that could be a big liability issue. Yeah. Too. Yeah, so there, yeah. there will certainly be training, yeah. you know, it wouldn't yeah. just be the case that you, you show up and we immediately put you behind the wheel. That's we want to have a, a process for that. Yeah, well, okay. well, if there Let's aren't go. any other questions or comments. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Haley, for yeah, thanks. coming. Thank you, Haley. Yep. Thank thanks. you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. And uh, I did see um, Joe Tr uh, Tringali in, yeah. is in attendance and he oh, had cool. has raised his hand. Hmm. I Yay. think he wanted to add to the discussion. So, Joe, Joe, I'll, um, can you use your microphone? He's muted. He's yeah, muted. He, I, I'm pressing the button to unmute him. So it might take him a minute to figure out. Um, I've asked you to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Hear you. yes. Okay. Oh, Hi, Joe. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. I've been listening all along, and I wasn't able to to uh, to uh, mention that that conversation about uh, who is responsible for transportation, and the answer is uh, both parties are responsible. Who the both the private, both the the company, the private company, and the town 
are equally responsible to provide transportation, accessible transportation. Um, that's uh, that, that's the bottom line. Uh, so uh, it's a little too late because the woman's gone. Um, oh no, it's not too late. We're gonna um, look into it after this meeting. Um, um, a little, uh, a little more, uh, 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 carefully, um, and look up the 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 regulations on that. And um, I want to hear a little more detail about the event itself, and and then the bu the bus, and and um, and whether they can accommodate um, a reasonable accommodation for anyone that you know is is requesting it. I, I, so there there could be a you know, do, does it have to be fully accessible? Uh, is one question. If it doesn't, how do they handle requests for a reasonable accommodation would be a, another question that should be answered. Yeah. Well, I don't want to bring a, you know, rehash the uh, the previous conversation. I just mm -hmm. wanted to put in my two cents about that. And, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Joe. And if they can't, you know, if they don't have, if they don't have a, a vehicle, then they can make accommodations to rent out a vehicle that is accessible. All right. Well, let's move on to our next item. Okay. If if um, if if we're done with that. Yeah. No, I think I uh, my yeah. My questions have been answered. It, is um, that the F F Y. 23, 23. municipal ADA improvement grant. Do you have uh, an idea, Maureen, of what you're applying for? Um, yeah, we could do, well, actually, you did skip over one, Tori, um, which was oh. to discuss the town's office oh, of right. disability, equity, inclusion. Oh, and sorry about that. <laughs> maybe let's start with that one, because that might take some more time. Um, so, you, Myra, one? you wanted to invite Pamela Young, who is the director yeah. of our Office of Disability Equity and Inclusion, um, but before you, um, the board invited her to a right. future I meeting. We discuss it. Yeah, you wanted to discuss. Well, what kind of questions do you want to ask? How can her and her office help be a, of assistance to this committee? Anybody has anyone given it any thought? I thought the idea was she was going to be the town liaison. Or maybe work together with you, Maureen? I'm unclear of those specifics, but I believe that the office of the our DEI office um, will be available. I do uh, for assisting this committee. I, I don't know what the capacity is and what that, you know, what what the details are, but um, but I do know that that their office will be available. Um, to this committee. And so um, if that's a new possibility, um, you know, what kind of, uh, I believe Myra wanted to talk about what things are important to you all that you think that the, the DEI office can be of assistance. Well, for example, the conversation that just came up, um, the question about how inclusive the Lake George trip is. And I guess her response was, we don't have to do it. We don't sponsor it. It's not our problem. Um, and, you know, it's the friends. So I guess if it's accessible, it's accessible. And if it's not, you know, we can look into it, but we don't have any responsibility. That's sort of what I heard her say. And that doesn't sound good to me. No. I don't know if it, did I, I don't know. Did I misrepresent that as far as anybody no. is concerned? No, that's the way it sounded to me as yeah. well. I, I don't think she meant it to come across maybe quite that way, but it did. Um, yep. And these trips do need to be accessible yep. to people. Um, I Whether it's private or public or, yeah. Like Joe whether said. Whether anybody it, applies no. for it or not. So it doesn't have to be a reasonable accommodation if somebody applies for it, will get somebody to drive a wheelchair van along with the trip. That's, I don't think, 
the way it's intended to be. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think that's what's intended by the law. So I think, I think that, I mean, it's, is it her job to know the ADA? It isn't, right? Who, who Pamela, uh, the yeah. D, that, that's a good question. No, which person? The Pamela C Young. Person? But I no. see inclusion as a part of the ADA. And mm. I see inclusion as a lot of things that we often uh, have problems with inclusion for parking. I mean, in many ways, she could be our advocate, inclusion right. for parking, inclusion for public events like Saren just brought up. Um, that it, it wasn't a terribly inclusive event if you couldn't get onto the pavilion. Now, somehow you did get on. Um, but I, I think that's really what I think that she could help us with um because it's the inclusion piece that usually ends up not being easy you know it's sort of like well you know if you want to like you can come and play you can do puzzles really uh you can come and you can play games we have games really do they work for everybody they don't so no right you don't do puzzles right at least you probably can't do them i can't do them and you know the other thing too and i i didn't want to take up time with this was there's no site where the hell do you hang out in the senior center it's not very inviting or inclusive part of it is the, the fault of the, my it, part of it is that it's at the bank center and you can't do much about the layout but no you know you can play games you can play do puzzles you could yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Weird. I mean, it, it wasn't a very inclusive response that we got. Um, no. Um, I don't know. Is it just me who heard it that way? Um, no, it's sort of like you can you can come and do our activities and our trips, but um, you know you're going to have to do some legwork, or we're all going to have to do. You know, it's like, and it might not work for you. You might not be able to get on the bus and. We're sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's sort of like we're an afterthought. That's the whole thing for me is, and I think that's the Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, is all of the things that she's going to be responsible for, for various constituencies, always feel like they're an afterthought. Yeah. And I think, I think that's that's where it is for me and you said it perfectly at least the afterthought the afterthought yeah. part is that's right yeah. is the lack always of inclusion that. yeah it's it's never easy to get included you know it really isn't maybe the town uh, could do some special training with all their staff that provide services to public what is ADA requirement is inclusiveness and everything. And I think <laughs> this really should go under Pamela Young to do mm. that. Maybe when she comes to our meeting, we could raise concerns about this. We see these are some of the things that the town is not up to par. And why don't you organize some training for all service providers, including the senior center or other affiliated nonprofits, whether it is Friends of Amherst Seniors or Amherst Neighbors or any other place? You know, I'm sure she's not be run only training. done with volunteers. We cannot really only leave it to them because then it becomes a liability issue. Because volunteers, you cannot really expect. They're just giving their time to provide some help. So that's- yeah, I don't think the volunteer thing is gonna work out. Uh, Mar Marty's raised your hand. Money. Okay, go ahead. Hi, uh, Mara, I think what you said was absolutely correct. Um, and I have to say from my experience and, and 
academia that this is a, an issue that you have quite often where you have a, I've run into this a lot and getting people to understand that it has to be inclusive for everyone. You know, if you have a, a student group who, who's gonna take a field trip and you don't provide accessibility, even if they're doing it with their own funds, because it's part of the institution, you have to have accessibility. And I think this is the same situation. And I was, you know, and I know the problems with trying to put tents and things on the Amherst Common, but there is a way to make them accessible. Um, and it's just getting people to recognize that they have to do it. So getting to the Pamela Young question, I think we want her, as far as I can tell, we want her to know that we need her to put us on her list when it has to do with inclusion. Uh, what uh, Saren said about trainings, um, I think perhaps she's thinking in the lens of uh, racial diversity, socioeconomic diversity. And I think the ability diversity should also go onto her plate. Yes. When she talks about it, she should talk about all of us who are afterthoughts. Um, and I, I like the way you put that, Elise, I really do. Um, so I guess, I mean, that's what I would wanna talk to her about. Essentially, that would just be the opener. And I, I don't know what she, you know, what her experience is with, um, you know, issues of disability and exclusion. I don't know anything about that. Most people probably haven't thought about it until they have to, like they know somebody or something happens to them and you go, oh, whoa, you know, when you sprain your ankle, that's when you figure out that it's really, really hard to walk on uneven pavement. Until you have a sprained ankle, you don't, you might not know that. Anybody ever sprain their ankle? It's pretty amazing when you walk on uneven pavement. You can't, you know, it's, it's very hard because your foot is so unstable, even if it's in a boot. Yep. Um, that that you you realize all of a sudden you say whoa if i were a person who had to deal with this 100 percent of the time it would be really really hard for me to walk on many of the sidewalks in this town um and until you have that and certainly if you're in a chair and there's huge roots that pull up the sidewalk and you can't get up them you know but i'm people who push strollers probably see that except they can just bend it push you know bend it back you know like uh what do you call it you just do a wheelie yeah you just hold it yeah. back and you just yeah you go up with but yeah you do a wheelie exactly um but if you're on a walker you're you have that problem if you're in you're a not... walker you can't do that you can't go up the thing no no joe also has his hand yeah ready. okay joe yeah let's uh ask him joe i just asked you to unmute yourself I wasn't clear uh, of the woman's job, uh, her just job description, or that of Pamela's. Uh, the inclusion is that from the high school or? No, no, no. She's a town oh, director of diversity, equity, and inclusion. She just started in July, which is a new it's office, a new position. Yeah. So the town this year created a new office, which I think is under our human resources department, on. Um, diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, and so Pamela Young has been hired as the um, as the uh, the director of, of that office. Um, and then Haley Bolton is the town senior services director. And she started in January. And they, and both, would... don't, they both don't know about the ADA and what, there was, what it's responsible for. We don't know anything about Pamela Young. We yeah. haven't met her. 
we don't know. She may she may know a lot about the ADA. We don't know anything about her. We haven't spoken to her. So we're just trying to figure out what we want to tell her that we um, that our interest that we have an interest in her office and make sure that she thinks in terms of inclusion of people with disabilities as well as people um, you know who are excluded for other reasons. Well, it should be the, that is basically arm in arm. Uh, yep. Uh, it's, there's no difference. We need to be included. Yep. No, I would true. Like I just don't hear... know what she knows about it. Uh, go ahead, Tori. What? I would like to hear her definition of her job title. Like, yeah, like yeah, and yeah. what is what, the job description? Too. Exactly. And, and, you know, I'd like to hear her talk about that before, before we, we talk her questions. Okay. okay, good. Okay. Does that give you enough, Maureen, to go on? Yeah, absolutely. I've been jotting down everything. This is really helpful. Okay. Um, and so I, um, so I guess anything that hasn't been said yet? Her, her interpretation of, of her job title. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, sure. Before we even ask her anything. No, oh, I think that's good. No, I'll just remind everybody that last January or December, Paul wrote to me or us, and he, he said that perhaps that that person was going to be involved with this committee, that, that it, it wasn't clear at the moment, but it was possible that there would be, you know, joint oversight or because I would think at one point we were worried that we would lose Maureen. Um, so I think he thinks of that office, or at least did at that time, of that office of including work on issues of accessibility and disability. Oh, I would, I would hope it's completely yeah. included. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to talk to her about. But yeah, and that's why I want to hear her interpretation before we um, talk to her. Yep. Okay, also, that's good. Maybe, maybe it might be a good idea if we can invite her to our next meeting and we can raise these concerns. Yep. And then see what she thinks about well, it. Well, actually, I like Tori's idea is to let her tell us first what she has in mind, yeah. what she's thinking about, and then we can see if we need to add anything to her plate, which is probably pretty full. But, you know, there are big plates, there are platters, there are serving <laughs> plates, you know, lots of plates. Yep. <laughs> I like the way she put that. The, the size of the plate. So, yes. yeah, but I think, Tori, you're right. Let her talk first which is great. So we'd like, we'd like a statement from her and we'd like to talk to her about. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't want, yeah. I don't want a written statement. I want to, no, I want her to speak to us. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you want her to come to, okay. All right. So it wouldn't be in advance of the meeting. All right. So, all right. I want to hear it straight from her self. Sure. From right here. Front sounds and center. good to me. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. Cause you can write, anybody can write and sound wonderful, but let's, I want I want her interpretation of what her job title is. Good idea. Her responsibilities. And, you know, it's interesting. I was just thinking, we don't look very diverse to her on Zoom. We're a bunch of white women. Um, we're pretty diverse in other ways, but we're a bunch of white women. And uh, anyway. <laughs> It is what it um, is. I mean, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, how about the FY twenty three? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, we just wrapped up the the la the last MOD grant, and that was for now. My memory's beginning to. Oh, yeah, it was for the front entrance of the bank center. Right. Bank center. I almost forgot. Um, and so the next round for fiscal year 2023, um, the grant cycle is 
is open right now and, and applications are due at the end of this month on September 30th, which is in about 15 days from now. Um, so I have, Fox. so, um, I, there's a few, um, uh, projects in mind, one being keeping with the theme of age and friendly, um, uh, age and dementia friendly um, is is uh, the um, repairing the courtyard, the outside courtyard, uh, making ADA improvements to that. Um, the courtyard, outside courtyard where of where? Uh, the ba of the bank center. Oh, okay. Um, to make that a um, a usable space, there is a step down to the sidewalk, and then there's a step up to get inside the building. So it's there's no um accessible route to use that space and where's the courtyard the courtyard is near the um the self uh, entrance of the building which is adjacent to the new stairs and the ramp yeah and then where johnny's restaurant is located um it looks like it was a lovely courtyard when it was new and oh. I, but again it still has those stairs but it has such nice potential for um you know people for anyone any members of the public but of particular seniors that are utilizing the senior center or anyone utilizing the bank center or or folks that live uh in the in the neighborhood such as uh such as elise um it's a nice nice um sheltered location with uh trees providing um shade and um and then um you know there could be programmatic uh, space uh activity that's provided there so anyways that's one project that the town is exploring and then um and i i think that that is what uh, ultimately we are um, going to be submitting there were other projects that uh, we were looking at um, um, but, um, but this was the one that we were thinking and, and Haley did, um, speak to the council on aging about this project, um, project and, and the council on aging really, um, loved this, um, and have, have been actually requesting that the courtyard, um, have a ramp and um have uh improvements to it um so that's something that they re really are, are excited to see um if if we're awarded the money so but we were also talking about fm systems for the yeah what's uh, that i mean the audible listening yeah 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 so that's already been funded um oh through, through I thought our that capital budget and um so now um I'm working with other staff about doing like um doing what is it? uh we have to go bid for for purchasing the equipment. Okay. I thought that had been postponed because of the door. No, no. Different, no, we found another funds. funding source. Yep. Okay. Okay, okay. so so do you know how much money is in the capital budget? There's $50,000 a year reserved for Correct. Okay, Mill River is going to cost more than that, I assume, Marty? Yeah, I expect it might, but it's worth looking at. Yeah, and I can certainly, you know, so the Mill River Recreation yeah. Area is managed through the town's recreation department. So I will definitely be forwarding this information to especially before someone else gets hurt like that yeah um to yeah. i can't think of his first name um uh, mr harp R real help real harp is i think is his no name idea. he's our rec department director oh. <clears throat> um so i'll bring this to his attention um, but it's and, really the ada i mean maybe he could put some of his money toward it too mm -hmm. but i mean yeah. we're looking for ada projects yeah, and then you are going to look at the transition plan too, right? Oh, sure. Yep. And, yep. You know yeah, what yeah, was what done, they... and if there was, it was already brought up in that, and why hasn't anything been done? And maybe high priority, rather than to wait for these grants. Yeah. So the thing yeah. is, is that you know the the transition plan, the 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 
the consultants that came out and audited all our facilities did a wonderful job. Um, it's so helpful. Um, it's um, the thing is, is that they have identified so many things that need needed need to be corrected, and we are correct. The town is making corrections. Uh, it's just it's not f feasible um, time wise and cost wise to be able to correct things all at once. Um, as it, we're talking about millions of dollars. So um, it is going to happen bit by bit. And as, you know, things come to our attention that will, I think, help um, raise a little more awareness of like, oh, okay, what, you know, um, um, that can help the conversation on, on particular situations such as perhaps the pavilion or the playground. Um, so, the town is definitely putting in its efforts to correct things as as quickly as possible, but it is certainly going to take time and it will always take time. So whatever is fixed now, we'll always have to, everything will, it's, it, it's a continuum that it will always have to be monitored and corrected as time goes on. Uh, Joe has raised his hand. What do you guys say, yeah. Joe? Oh, one of the projects that, um... I've seen that was somewhat successful was the uh, project they used in Northampton where they uh, offered 50% uh, of, of the uh, cost of making the storefront accessible. And I'm thinking about the storefronts on North Pleasant Street. Uh, I think it's North Pleasant, you know, where uh, the pizza places and the, uh, um, I forget what other stores are there. But there, there are a lot of stores that have just one step up, and I'm wondering if, to make themselves accessible, um, they could use part of the uh, part of the money from the town, and they could kick in some of their own um, to make their stores accessible. Thanks for your suggestion. I, you know the. I can certainly pass that information along. Um, you know, capital budget money is is for town properties and facilities, so that that funding source wouldn't be available to you know private businesses. But there could be other funding sources out there that that could help uh, private businesses um, to make ADA improvements. Okay. I was also wondering about the sidewalk on the side of the street where the black sheep is, mm -hmm. um, that is a pretty bad sidewalk. And it's not just because of the topography. It's just, uh, it's pretty broken up. It's very difficult walking. I don't know what it's like to use a vehicle, you know, a, a chair on it. Um, but I mean, that's town property. So I don't know what kind of work is involved in that. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know if the town thought about it at all. Um, Maybe it just goes under sidewalk repair. I don't know, but yeah, um, it's a problem place. I will say I don't know when the last time you've walked, you've gone by the black sheep, but um, a couple months ago, feels like a couple months ago. Um, in the last four months, I'll say that a uh, part of that sidewalk has been repaired, yeah. and um, and has has been greatly repaired um where there were cracks and when it rained or if there was ice prior to when it was uh, repaired it would it just be um really uh dicey and, and unsafe and now since it's been repaired um ice doesn't accumulate and there isn't sort of um just sort of a a um sort of river going across the the sidewalk it's it's really helped so I, I don't know where you are talking about specifically but i just wanted to point out there has been um some repair well, work last done time i walked on it it wasn't so easy i don't know um but maybe you're looking for different things than i am um anyway i don't know if that's part of the ada and it sounds like you have a project in mind mm -hmm. um does anyone do you need the endorsement of the daac for that project yeah that'd be great um, does anybody... Just remind us what it was again. For the court outdoor courtyard oh. uh, outside of um, mm. the Banks Community Center. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's important. 
you said there's yeah. steps up and down. Mm -hmm. and I thought there was a ramp, but maybe not. No, there isn't. No, there isn't? Okay. Yeah. So uh, are we going to wait against the Mill River Pavilion? Well, there's two pockets of money. This comes from a grant they're applying for. The other one is in the town budget under capital. And personally, if you want the Mill River job done, I think it would be better to push it through capital because it's more likely to get done because a grant has to be approved. The way, the reason I'm saying uh, giving higher priority to Mill River is because there are activities planned on that pavilion. And I witnessed it yesterday that it is a hazard. For people what I'm saying is there's more money, very probably more money in the capital budget than there would be in a grant that you can get turned down for. Like you apply, but that doesn't mean you get it. Does that make sense? And yeah, it does uh, to me. Yeah. Also, because we're um becoming a age and dementia friendly town um uh, fixing the courtyard goes along with that because it's right by the senior center so we're more likely to get that grant money to get that fixed than to fix the pavilion with it because yeah, yeah. i mean i think you can make a case for both, but I was thinking that the capital budget, there is ADA money, $50,000 set aside in each capital uh, budget, but that doesn't mean that there can't be other capital money applied to it, especially since Paul was there and saw a woman fall backwards off of the pavilion. And um, I'm sure, you know, other than the concern for the woman, concern for liability of the town is big. And if he mm -hmm. talks about it with the capital planning, joint capital planning committee, I bet they could find other money to add to the 50,000 that's ADA. That's what I'm thinking. That could have been me that fell out of there. Come it on. could have been anybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. So I think, but Paul was there and he saw it and I'm yeah. sure he is aware of the liability of the town. And I'm sure that he, you know, had concern for the person, but the 50,000 is already there and more money could be set aside from um, through the joint capital planning process. And I suppose this committee could advocate for that when they do that. I think we found out last year, they do it in February. Yeah, I believe so. I wonder, I wonder yeah. if it makes sense for us to write a note to, uh, Capital Budget Committee, I don't know who to address it, including the town manager and Maureen, of course, that we need immediate immediate uh, action taken to improve the pavilion site, make it ADA, meet the ADA requirements of that area. Would it be give how would you do it, Marty? Would you put, what, huh? Marty, how would you do it? Would you put a rail? Uh, I mean, it's not required to have a rail. If it's it's not required inches. to have a rail. So, um, yeah, it's not because it's you have to have a rail if it's two steps up. Yeah. And that is not. So they yeah. wouldn't, that there's no ADA requirement that they put a rail on it. But what could they do? They need to make it flush or they could put That's a right. threshold yeah. rail. Yeah. Well, they can't the rail make it. They can't make it flush because then they're going to have water in it. And then they could. But put they a, can it, slightly pitch. They away can put from the edge. Ramp. They could pitch the edges. Yeah, they they can like a little tiny ramp type thing that would like yeah. they could extend the edges. That's what I'm talking about. It's called a okay. threshold ramp. Threshold and they ramp. Should mark them. Okay. Mm -hmm. they I wouldn't put a threshold too. ramp there. I'd I'd build it up. I'd build the land up to the pavilion floor and have it barely pitched away. 
No, no, that's asphalt then, because it's an asphalt sidewalk there. Yeah, that ought to be asphalt. So There's no sidewalk. There's no sidewalk. No. Well, there, there needs to be a sidewalk too. Out. Let's solve that problem first. Well, I will say, this is all great. We we have building inspectors that can certainly yeah. go out and take a look, yes. closer look at this yeah. Um, yeah. and use their yeah. their and expert maybe figure out how to knowledge. Do it. Yeah, and so. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll leave it up to the experts, um, and I will certainly bring that to their attention that this um, that a woman fell off the pavilion, and yes. um, you know, it, and and suggest that you know they take a look and see if there's any improvements that could be done to the pavilion to it, so no one else falls off in the future. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good so, idea. do we do we have a motion about the courtyard? So. I'll make a motion that um, we go after the grant for the courtyard and that we have the town look at the situation at the pavilion using our $50,000. I think that's two motions. Okay. When we, yeah. when we separate them. Separate it up? Okay, separate yeah. it up. Yeah, so the, the first one. Motion to... Um, to go for a grant to repair the courtyard. Second, anybody? I'll second that. Right. Okay. Don't um, worry. Um, I think we talked about it enough, Tori. <clears throat> How do you vote? It. Oh, I'm. I vote to to do that. Okay, Saren. Yes. Um, Marty. Yes. Elise. Yes. And me. Yeah. So it's unanimous. Now your other motion. Okay, the second motion is to potentially <laughs> utilize the fifty thousand dollars in capital to ask the town to uh, solve the issues at the pavilion at Mill River to prevent someone else from being hurt and to provide accessibility to the pavilion. Second. So that's I, a little messy, but we want. Um, I guess we want. Um, we want the town to use capital funds yes. to um, to make the pavilion accessible. That's right. If it, That's if it is, um, and please know, uh, I did briefly go through the transition plan for the recreation area, and there are no in, um, non-compliant issues identified associated with the pavilion. And who knows, maybe maybe the consultant missed something. Right. So we so I, I think the motion should be to, uh, you know, if 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 you'll indulge me, is to have uh, a, a building inspector take a look to see if there's any, you know, non-compliant issues with the pavilion. If there are no non-compliant issues with the pavilion, I, I would say, but if there should be some other improvements made, that's another uh, that's another conversation. Okay. Um, we have but the the, the money, the fifty thousand dollars, is for uh, removing, you know, phys, you know, ADA uh, physical barriers. And so, if if this is not an ADA matter, then there should be other uh, any repairs should be funded with some other budget, not the the ADA improvement budget. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, when the, I'm uh, when I'm thinking. Uh, since they did the ADA assessment, the land around the pavilion could have sunken, mm -hmm. which Ooh. made it, which is making it not accessible. Sure. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, I can ask. Of having it inspected is a good idea, especially since the town manager watched somebody fall off the pavilion. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, not every accident is the fault. Uh, some some accidents are just unfortunate, but it's not because something doesn't comply. And so the question is, I guess what you're going to, is the building inspector really that ADA aware that he's going to know what he has to do? Oh, yeah. Ooh, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a an issue with the 50,000 that is already there in the capital budget, I wouldn't put in certain amount. I would just 
require or request the town to address the issue. Okay. Open-ended, okay. without any dollar okay. restriction, one way or another. So we want we want the town to examine the pavilion. Yes. At Mill River and make any recommendations. That's right. For ADA safety improvements. Exactly. Well, or it or the way it is right now, it's a safety hazard. Not only people. Right. Well, that's why I'm saying ADA yeah. safety improvements. Right. Right. Okay. So can we do it that way? We can say that we where the motion should be that we want the town to have the Mill River Pavilion inspected um, with an eye toward making ADA safety improvements. Yes, that's good. Does that work, Marty? Sounds good to me. Yes. Okay. All yeah. right. Is there a second? Yes. I'll yes. second. All right. Okay. Let's vote, Elise. Yeah. Sarah? Yes. Marty? Yes. Tori? Yes. And me? Yes. Okay. Yep. And then um, we had one more item, wasn't there? There is. is uh, well, before we, we get to the items, minutes. we want to see if um, I, I believe to uh, Tracy Zappian is in attendance. Okay. Did you do that? Was do an that? Item, that was for an item that I wanted to bring up. So let's, what else is there on the agenda? Um, I wanted to talk about um, just bring you, uh, I guess I, we can just do this real quick is that um, has been brought to our attention that there um, there are some items at the related to the pools at the Mill River Recreation Area that should be uh, explored. Um, um, okay. Like a, a providing um, a lift and stairs into the pool, and so um, staff is looking into that and um, and that that's going to be an ongoing conversation of of. Okay. Of that, so I just wanted to let you know. Okay, that's good. All right, the reason that Tracy's here, I think, is um, the G O L government organization. I don't legislation committee of the town council is reviewing snow removal bylaws, um, and we've always had an interest in that. Um, and Tracy and I have had some back and forth. Tracy wrote a letter. Um, and essentially, the bylaw isn't so bad. They might want to tweak it. Um, what's, what is in question for me and Tracy, I think, has a lot to do with the enforcement of the bylaw. I think Tracy has some ideas about the bylaw, which um, I don't know if we need to bring up here, but the issue of how the snow removal is enforced is a question that we want them to deal with. Um, because right now it's supposed to be the police. The police don't do it. And there's a lot of ice on the sidewalks. And there might be some good reasons that the police don't do it. Um, and so it might be better for somebody else to do it, but it isn't getting done. And Tracy, do you want to add to that? We don't have a lot of time, so I thought I'd encapsulate the issue. Tracy should be able to, oh, oh, oh sorry. I'll do it one more time. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay, great. Um, yeah, as Myra said, I mean, there were actually two items that I just wanted to just mention. I'm sorry, I didn't come in time for public comment. I was coming from another meeting. Um, so I think, what I understood with GOL is there were a few different questions. Is the police are the ones who have the authority under the current town bylaws to enforce the requirement that people shovel their walks? Um, it's not really clear how often the police do it. I know I've contacted the police sometimes. I think I even brought this up at one of th this committee's meetings last winter is that there really isn't any information on the town website that to say if you have an issue about a neighbor not shoveling their sidewalk to contact the police. Um, and so it actually took me a while to even track down like who to contact. Uh, so, I mean, there were questions, GOL had some questions about, you know, should it be under the police or not? 
should it be under a different department, such as the inspection department that deals a lot with the buildings. Um, there were also the other thing that they were interested in reviewing is, um, you know, just the idea that so as a courtesy, the DPW, they currently do have a list of sidewalks that they shovel. Um, they do one pass of different sidewalks. There's a long a list of them based on places where people walk a lot, safe routes to school and so on. But they will one only um, shovel those sidewalks if there's enough snow to bring out the plows. And two, they will only do those sidewalks once in a snow event. They won't do them multiple times. And then sometimes, you know, towards the end of a snow event or if there's melt or something like that, they don't go back out. And whether, because the DPW has done this as a courtesy, whether some property owners, including newer property owners in town, don't realize that they actually are the ones responsible for shoveling the, pro the sidewalk in front of their streets. And um, so, that was the one issue. Uh, and I actually okay. learned too, I wasn't aware of this, but it's actually the property owners adjacent to a sidewalk are responsible for other sidewalk maintenance too, like including if there's like grid or sand or things like that, it's supposed to be the property owners who take care of like all those issues. So not just snow, you mean? And that was news to me as somebody who's lived in this town for 20 plus years, but then I don't have a sidewalk next to my house. So I guess the question is, do we as the DAAC want to weigh in on this in any way? Um, because yeah, yes, I mean, oh, yeah. that's so no, my I mean, So, one thing is, I asked, I said that if it got it was it, the GOL was going to ask at the town council meeting on Monday for this bylaw to be referred back to the GOL for more substantive review. You know, they were interested in talking to the police. They were interested in talking to the inspection department. I did suggest that they also reach out to committees like such as the, this committee, as well as like TAC and other committees. I mean, it, I just know that it's come up with, you know, you think this committee and here? other committees. I, I really don't, I think that it would be incomplete if they don't actually ask. Okay. I mean, Disability because Access we've Advisory Committee has letters. talked about it before. I mean, I know that I've, I have letters like I wrote 20 years ago saying the sidewalks need to be better shoveled, right? And so it's still- Every year we so, send a letter to the town um, manager about it. So, so, I mean, I think, I mean, I if, if GOL decides to send it back to the council without asking committees, I think people should say, you know, you need to get the input. If you're gonna change the bylaw, you need to get the input of committees before it, a new version passes. So, I guess it's not clear steps. to me what needs to change in the bylaw. Yeah. Just the enforcement is the problem. Well, and I also mean, maybe you know, to just clarify this thing about how the DPW is shoveling, but that doesn't. Right. So it's people's. People yeah. still don't have the right. responsibility. Some of um, it is not the bylaw problem. Some of it is lack exactly. of information about the bylaw. So right. it seems yeah. to me that, I mean, we have to do, I don't know if this committee needs to um, take a position about whether it's inspection services or the police who enforce it? What do you think? I don't think you have enough information to make a recommendation, to be honest. You don't know what the staffing level is um, and you know what that entails in the pros and cons of, of either department, to be honest. Cool. Okay. So that's I my mean, two for cents. Me, for me, yeah, it's no, I, not... I mean, I agree. I think that's why they were going to reach out to the departments. Well, yeah, but also just to, out, eat, but he, also just fine. to find out from the departments how many calls they even get, like how many people actually know to <laughs> ask the police. Um, so I think um, they need a public information campaign. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know that we need to take a position because I, for one, don't have a position about who enforces it. I think we we need it to be done. It's yep. the town's job to decide who does it. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we just need to wait to hear from them. But I agree with Maureen, we don't have enough information. But every year in October, we send a letter to the town manager about snow removal. I mean, we just do it. And maybe we should send it to the council. When I know too, manager. when I wrote them, when I wrote the GOL members, I also suggested that they include like a clarification that that there's also the responsibility for somebody to shovel like out the curb cut areas. Um, 
you know, bus at the stops. intersections and, and also the bus stops. I mean, bus I mentioned stops. the bus stops in my letter. Terrible. Like, I'd still like to know who is responsible for those. And oh there God. is another section of the bylaw, too, that deals with shoveling, like, private properties. And one issue I've seen sometimes is that if people have a commercial parking lot, for example, or even, like, a residential, like, apartment building complex parking lot, sometimes when those lots are um, cleared with their private plows that they'll plow into the sidewalks too. Yep. Like and I know, right I know that happened. I know that happens in middle school. They always pile the yeah, side, so. the snow up on the sidewalk no. yeah. at the edge of so. them. So, I mean, so. there's a lot of work to do on this, but I'm not sure what the DAAC can do about it right now, except to reiterate to the town council that it's really important that people be made aware of their responsibilities. That's what it seems to me. Yeah, I mean, the reason I contacted them is GOL was actually, I mean, they're the governance organization legislation committee and the previous council said, hey, there's a bunch of bylaws that we didn't act on. We want you to review them, but they were just reviewing a whole bunch in a row yeah. and just kind of checking off their lists. And I was like, but wait, don't do that with this particular bylaw because I think it deserves additional consideration. So, well, thank you for that. I mean, I'm but sure I think we can and, wait. We can wait yeah. to the next meeting. Plus, our time is up. So Myra, um, that other one I just wanted to mention quick is just about the street lights. I policy. think we're uh, I think we're out of time, Tracy. I understand, oh, of course. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move street on, lights. Tracy. But but if you could email me so we can put that on the agenda um, for the next time. Yeah, I think what the issue is, just so people can think about it, is the town is turning off a lot of lights, or at least they want to. Um, no. To protect the birds and the blah 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 oh, and. Um, there is a member of the town council who is supporting it, who has a light right outside her house. She's made that clear. It's not, I'm not speaking out of school. She said that. Um, but um, I think that's true. We should have brought this up. When are they going to make this decision, Maureen? Do you know? I am not, I'm not clear on that. Um, okay. But I, I can because, look into that. Because lighting on sidewalks is pretty critical for a lot of people. Yes. Uh, and and there's not enough of it <laughs> yeah but we don't have enough lighting on our street, yeah. street either and and you think well i think you might want to um oh boy i should have brought this up earlier um yeah. this well, is why don't issue. you send me yeah send me a uh, email myra and um and um I, i'll look into it and um i yep. can send out everyone an email um, and you can let us know when they're going to make their decision about this sure yeah i can look into that we might need to have an emergency meeting this committee should weigh in on that not so much the snow that way but okay all right well, um the I next meeting yeah what what was go what's going on with the north beach at puffer's pond oh was, yeah good question. oh that was another um there was a um like the sw swimming pools um there was um the access to the North Beach oh, okay. um, that, is okay. um, deteriorating, and so that needs to be corrected. So, um, so we, we're looking. Uh, staff is looking into both items. Okay. Okay, and they're thinking about doing it. So, okay, but the lighting is an issue. Um, we might need. I mean, I want everybody read up on it. See if you can find it. There are. Um, there's a proposal by two town councilors. Um, and they want to talk about cut, turning off a lot of lights <laughs> to save money and also because they want it to be better for people to sleep and they want it to be better yeah. <laughs> for birds and but birds. I think a lot of it has to do with circadian <laughs> rhythms and lights going in people's windows and stuff like that. Um, for to that, I just say there are blackout shades. Oh anyway, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. All right. Well, so we are out of time. So um, the next meeting is, uh, I guess, October. Jeez. So it'll be October, October 10. 11th, actually. 11th. Uh, Sunday, right. Monday. Tuesday. 11th. Yeah, 11th. Right. You're right. All right. And if, it, if we need to take a position earlier about the lights, we might need to have a really quick meeting or at least an email exchange. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Bye.